Hello everyone, this is Ron Chan, founder of the Inset Duos Domain Company. Today I'm going to discuss the only Windows version of the Mega Man 1 level editor called The Rock and Roll, the Mega Man Editor. Before we begin, there are other Mega Man 1 level editors before Rock and Roll. The first one is from YY. Of course, I haven't even tried it yet, and the other one is called Visine, which runs on DOS. These DOS programs are no longer running over Windows 98, and I have Windows 8 for my previous Windows XP system, which is still damaged, and I don't have the CD to fix the simple problem. Visine is created by FX3, and the Rock and Roll Editor is created by Dan. The Rock and Roll Editor is the only best Mega Man 1 editor ever made. Here I'm showing you what its features. You can use the left click button to select the object. Then you can use the object to paste it on the main editor window. But fortunately you can only choose half of the objects until you edit one of the Wiley stages. Only then you can select the entire object you see on the screen. You can also use the right click button on the main editor window to select an object on the screen. For better convenience, you can turn off the green lines when you design a level. Do you know what else it has? The TSA Editor. TSA stands for Tile Squadron Assembler. Here you can select the graphics by left clicking and paste it on the object selected screen. On the object selected screen you can use the right click button to change the color. Did you see these numbers on the screen? That's your TSA Solid T. You can hold the shift button and use the left click to change them. You can even draw graphics by holding the shift and left click. Speaking of TSA Solid T, let's check it by clicking on the Mega Man's face icon. You see it has four Solid T settings per level. When you click on them, you can change them where you want. Unfortunately, since you're editing Mega Man 1, you only get 6 TSA Solity settings. And if you're expected to have the behind the wall background like a fireman stage, you have to create a custom TSA block assembly code. However, I suggest you expand the Mega Man 1 ROM to MMC6 or MMC3 to add more custom TSA blocks up to 255 of them. If you want to your Killer's beta test with Necro Man stage, it gives an idea to create a DOOR custom TSA block. In each level, you can set the doors from each screen and the stage's music. I'll explain the doors from each screen a little bit. Now with the boss settings. It allows to edit the boss's weaknesses per level. Then your own weapons decrease energy and the boss's body or projectile damage. Some levels let you edit their AIs, but you can download the document from Bisquit. The palette editor is simple. You can choose the colors on top of that screen and paste it on the color selector. When it says match before and after palettes, it copies that palette after Mega Man enter one of the doors. But that only with the normal stages and not the Wally stages. Then the weapon colors. When it says match Mega Man palettes, it copies that one on the current level screen to normal and after death. Now the color cycles. I don't know why it's disabled, but it's quite pointless if you know what I mean. Next is the room selector. It is quite interesting. You can choose the rooms from hex 00 to hex 1F when you design a level. However, some rooms carry over to the Wally stages, so use it with caution. If you're planning to edit the rooms above hex 1F, don't do it or something serious will happen to your game. You can set up checkpoints in each level, however you must set the respawn point and an activation point at the same room. Next up, the sound effects editor. Here you can set up different sound effects the way it designates to each sound effect. However, there is a glitch on that part. After you select the sound effect and you click OK, you will notice that the boss chosen and stage select music has changed to its sound effect. And even if you try to change it back, it's still here. Unfortunately, it's virtually impossible to change it to normal. When you actually play it on your emulator once you save the changes in the ROM, this is the result. But there is a way. 
Download the hex editor from romhackit.net and go to rom offset 1b6eb and 1b7ab. Changing the way it's changed. There. Better now? Next is the statistics editor. You can change the settings that the game isn't normally set. And the sprite change editor allows changing the enemy graphics and palette per each set per level. There are 9 sets to choose which also carries on to the Wally stages. Now we go on with the enemy editing. When you click on the object editing or press the F3 button, you can use the left click button to drag an enemy and right click to select an ID number for an enemy. Can't tell what an enemy ID number is? Go to your rock and roll folder and click data. Here are your enemy ID numbers but all of them are included. Select the wrong enemy and your graphics will get messed up unless you're using the sprite change editor. And you know what else? You can press shift and the right click button to view its features. Here are your enemy properties. You can choose an enemy list and a screen number. If you move your screen off an enemy, you can follow that order or uncheck it. Unfortunately, you can't change the global enemy health nor should I say the number that inflicts the damage to Mega Man. Now let's click on the tackle fire button. Here is a list of enemies listed on that order. You can delete all of them except one enemy and add enemies from scratch by pressing the F4 button. Make sure you set your enemy checkpoints. However, you must set them in proper order or some enemies set outside of that order may appear late or won't appear at all. I've seen some hacks where enemies appear by surprise, but I have to blame Cold Man Stage from Hyper Canyon's hack. Bass. What? I like root beer. Do, do you expect me to drink any alcohol on TV? Fuck you, dickheads. While you're in object mode, you can move around special objects with the left click button, or we call them actives or active object. Use the right click button to change the numbers. I'll explain the numbers. Zero is for air or to use them as temporary blocks. One is for solid, which is great for levels that don't use a solid level, or for a block wall on the left. Two is for the guts block, where you need a guts weapon to pick them up. And three is to proceed to the next screen when it's touched, on the right. Just like the enemies, press shift and right click. From there you can expand the width and height and move them to another screen. I never actually used that function, but I used my hex editor to do the process. It's six bytes each. However, it gets hard when you try with Fireman Stage. When you add the active object, press F5. Here's the most irritating thing, the scroll editor. Actually, you can set the direction scrolls by double left click on the scroll position. But there is an error when it says boss slash n. It's actually nothing and vice versa. When you uncheck simple mode, you're seeing hex numbers which, which you can double left click and enter the hexadecimal value. Now here's the most irritating glitch when you're using the editor, so that the checkpoints can actually ruin the game. The scroll start is okay, but the two checkpoints can cause your screen to go berserk or even corrupt your game's INES header. However, you can fix the scroll checkpoints properly by hex editor. According to the document, Label 93FA is a source bit to, to the beginning of the scroll sc screen, which is ROM offset 1540A, and label 9412 is a source bit to where the scroll screen ends before it proceeds to the next scroll, which is ROM offset 15422. For the better, I suggest you make a comparison with your hex editor very safely. Now what happens if you move Mega Man's face while you're in object mode? Check it out. Why you do that and you play it on your emulator when Mega Man teleports and he can't land? How do I fix this? A lot of ROM hackers gave up on that project because of that glitch. But don't give up. There is hope. However, you open your hex editor and go to ROM offset 1C52A. Did you notice that each number ends with a 4? 
When you find that number, you will notice that one of those numbers has a zero. Simply change it to four and save the ROM. Mega Man will finally land the way it should be. And by the way, you can't press shift and left or even right click on that face. There is no option to it. Do you know what the rock and roll editor doesn't even have? The TSA doors for opening and closing. Unfortunately, only the Mega Man 1 DOS editor, Visine, has that option. It's even more complicated than it looks. Remember the doors from screen? You can set the current screen or type the hex number. Unfortunately, there is no second door screen or even graphic TSA door screen, including the boss rooms in your rock and roll editor. I've seen hacks that can't even fix the TSC doors for opening and closing, and Mega Man and Mushroom Kingdom is one of them. How pathetic. Did you see my current Rockman AF project? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Even Suki Kibo's Rockman Claw hat. It's perfect. When you try edit doors from screen in one of the Wily stages and replace the FF hexadecimal number, what happens if he touches it? Did you see? There are corrupt colors and door sets even weird. It is possible to disable the after doors palette after he touches the screen. To edit the doors the proper way, step 1. The first door graphic TSA screen. Go to ROM offset 1D07E. You can leave them to 0, zero if you want, but it has 6 of them. If you expected to do one for the Wally stages, you can relocate the ROM offset into an empty space. To move them, go to ROM offset 1D078 to change them. You must disable the after doors palette unless you need it. The second door TSA is ROM Offset 1D08C and the boss TSA is ROM Offset 1D097. All of them are 11 bytes each. Now here's the second door from screen that the rock and roll editor doesn't even have. They are found in ROM Offset 15F07. And the important part is to edit the 32x32 block TSA for the doors. Here how it explains. Each door level is located within 8F40. The palette is 8F70. And the opening and closing data is 8F80. Here's how it works. In 8F40, each TSA block is 4 bytes each. You can use your TSA editor and type these hexadecimal numbers. Then in 8F70, each palette is 2 bytes each. Unfortunately, you have to edit the TSA door palettes on your own. And finally, 8F80. Here how it's explained. The first byte. Number of edits the shutter does to the scene consequent the bytes is pairs of first byte. Location of the edit on the name table. Second byte. Four tile blocks to put on that position. The four tile blocks are described in room shuttle block data and room shuttle block pals. That pretty much covers it. There is other stuff that the rock and roll editor doesn't even have. The graphic VRAM setup. When you open up the editor and you set the graphics from the other editor, you will notice that it doesn't match from your game emulator, which can be confusing when you edit the level. And you can't even edit the game's ending. You can't edit them in Gutsman things, but not the obvious selection of Block 7 f How do I design this? Unfortunately, you have to figure it all of it out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the editor I'm explaining. If you're expected to make a good Mega Man 1 hack, and if you're a newbie or veteran level, I wish all of you the best of luck in creating your own Mega Man 1 project. I hope I can see the best of it.